Hi, it's Larry Herb, Xbox's Major Nelson. Welcome to the official Xbox podcast. Uh, we're kind of chugging on through January. We got the whole gang here, Jeff and Rebecca. Hey, gang. <laughs> we're chugging. Hey. There's gangs. Are we building a railroad? What's happening here, Larry? <laughs> chug, are chug. we Are we in a gang? <laughs> well, you guys, you guys are the, the posse, the gang, the crew, whatever you want to, the fire team. Dude, what kind of Fire criminal like enterprises one. do you get? Up all right, all right, all right. Then, then to time. make then to make it more thematic, action schemes. You're you're my operators, okay? Oh, there we go. <laughs> I like that better. <laughs> to make it more thematic, anyway. Welcome back, everybody. Mm-hmm. Welcome back. Hello, Rebecca, New York City. How's is it chilly out there still? Yeah, we're expecting a big snowstorm this weekend. Ooh. Wish me luck, um, mm. but it sounds like a good time to curl up on the couch and play some games. So it's not a right. good snowstorm in New York City unless someone's going down Fifth Avenue and cross country skis. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, I'll keep an eye out for that. <laughs> keep an eye out for that as well. Uh, but Jeff and I are still uh, tucked away here in the Northwest, where well, it's sunny today. I don't know about you over there, Jeff. Jeff and I live a few miles apart, but it's, it's sunny here. It's really disconcerting. There's a ball of fire in the sky. Give me my rain, please. Thank you. All right. Well, <laughs> hey, gang, we, we, it's, it's, it's great to see you guys. We had a good week of gaming. We're going to talk about our, our, our operator experience in just a few moments. <laughs> a, a yeah. good week, he says. Good, it, good experience. Yes. Bad result. Right. Well, we had fun. That's all that matters. That's uh, true. I wouldn't say bad result. Yeah, it was a good time. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was. It was a learning. There was opportunity for learning. Let's say that. That's a good mm-hmm. good way to spin it, Larry. Uh, but okay. anyway, it's uh, it's uh, well. I guess we should just jump right into it, Jeff. I see. You know, I see something in the back there that I don't recognize on your screen. There. What are you? What are you playing over there? Yeah. So uh, a good friend of ours, uh, friend of the show, Andy Lunique. You remember Andy? Oh, Andy. Chef. Yeah. I love Andy. Uh, seems to <laughs> be the, uh, the official, unofficial uh, culinary artist of the gaming industry, it seems like. And uh, we used to work very closely with with Andy. He used to be on the team, actually, uh, yeah. if we go back a few years. And he tweeted out last week... Um, just gameplay of a game called Chorus. So Chorus hmm. was a is game he that affiliated with that game. Is that what he's doing now? I don't know. I know. I don't think he works for okay. Ford or anything. It was just like showing gameplay. And it was like uh, everybody and myself included that replied was like, how did I not know more about this game? This is a game that came out on, uh, on Xbox December 3rd. So, it, you know, a couple of days before Halo might have, we might have just sort of like been focused elsewhere. Right. It's an open Fair. world space shooter game uh, with some. Again, sounds um, like Halo. Mis- <laughs> yeah, 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 no, no, like literally in a spaceship. Oh, like, I see. So mm. if it, maybe they pretend you were the pilot and the whole game was about the pilot. Oh, then I think we're getting some. I remember hearing about this. We Can't, first revealed on. this game go back on. in 2020 when we first showed the first batch of sort of like different games, indie games. Although I guess Assassin's Creed Valhalla was shown for the first time. It was like spring of. 2020 so almost two years ago and uh like the the pilot of the ship uh she's got some sort of um sort of psychic abilities she, she's above and beyond just a normal pilot and so right. she can sense things and i'm pretty early in the game but it's really interesting uh now is it fps expansive environments it's no it's a third person again you're in the ship the whole time so so does so, it have a vibe yeah. like like dead space uh, again not in the ship, as in like Isaac Clark is like 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 running around the halls uh, of the ship. I see, I you're see. controlling the ship. I see, I see, I see. I see. So you're piloting. Uh, so like if, if you've okay. played like Everspace, yep. uh, but but different because it's really it's an open world game, like where you're picking up side missions and you're visiting people, uh, escorting, uh, going headlong into into battle, like going through sort of warp areas, and the map is like really cool in 3D, and there's a, a lot there. I'm, I'm pretty early so, on, but it's definitely captured me. Yeah, go on, Rebecca. You're you're battling other ships. Typically, yes. Pilot, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, pretty early on, so they're introducing me to new, you know, new types of ships, and some that are armored, and some aren't. And uh, so, dogfighting. Like, I guess the nearest thing I would say is if you enjoyed uh, the Star Wars game that came out. Was it last year? I don't. I don't even remember. Yep. Uh, Rogue Squadron. Um, so if you enjoyed Rogue Squadron, that type of game, it's obviously not in the Star Wars universe, but if you are looking for more in a single player adventure, I would say 
check it out. In fact, the game happens to be on sale because this week there's the Deep Silver and Friends sale. So uh, hmm. Chorus is 25% off. So if any of those things sound interesting, open world space shooter, uh, dog fighting, adventures, I would say check it out. This is uh, so. This is as you said, published by Deep Silver and it's developed by Fish Labs, and they've got they've been around for about ten years or so. They've done some mobile games. I'm just looking on their Wikipedia. They've done so, so, <laughs> interesting. They've done some of the Saints uh, Row ports for for Switch. So <laughs> that was oh interesting. Yeah. So they, they've hmm. who knows? Something they're from Germany. So good friends in Germany. Uh, nice. Anyway, we'll have to check that out. So it's so so it's captured you, has it, Jeffrey? Is is space it, travel your thing? Uh, it is here. There's sort of a, you're inside this, the, your main character's named Nara. You're in her head a lot. There's actually a little bit of like, um, you know, the, the sort of like internal monologue that, that reminds me of Hellblade a little bit where, uh, you were sort of speaking to yourself. So I, anyway, if you found that disconcerting, then maybe not your thing, but uh, can I, can I read the synopsis? <laughs> Go for it. Nara, a top Let's pilot with a checkered past and her sentient starfighter Forsaken must work together to defeat the Circle, an oppressive cult led by the great prophet who seeks to dominate the whole universe. So it's a sentient ship. So are you like, do you communicate with it or is it like an AI? Yeah, tell us about that, Jeff. You've just got, you've got more abilities than uh, like a normal captain in a normal ship to the extent that those things exist in real life. So um, just think of like, being able to do above and beyond what a normal spaceship might be able to do. And I'll leave it there. Okay. <laughs> I'm just reading, I'm cool. reading it about it. Yeah. Anyway, so check that out. And uh, if you want to, you know, we'll put a link to that in the, uh, in the show notes, if you'd like that chef, thank you for the, thank you. And thank you, Andy. It's first of all, it's good to hear Andy's name again. Second of all, thanks for the tip. Yeah. Uh, it just shows like sometimes uh, the right post at the right time, like showing off some footage. It makes you look at a game that you knew existed, but didn't know anything about or it. forgot and about it. just completely was, yeah, wasn't what I expected and in a very pleasant way. Yeah. That, that happens to me a lot when I go back after, you know, whatever the big AAA tentpole title comes out and you're like, oh, what was this? And then something came out six or eight months ago, like the pedestrian that I was playing a lot of a few weeks yeah. ago, that which came out mm, you know, yeah. a year and a half ago. So you never know. There's, a, there's always something there for you. So. So that's that's been your latest jam. Uh, Rebecca, what are you playing? If you don't mind me asking. Um, I haven't been playing a ton this week. Um, obviously, we played Rainbow Six Extraction last night, which was awesome. Uh, uh, we've got video on that in just a moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I finished Invincible on Amazon Prime, a superhero animated series, but pretty dark. Um, highly recommend it. It was really, really good. Um, but yeah, aside from that, I've just been playing kind of casual games with my friends like Overcooked 2 here on Couch Co-op. I love Couch Co-op on Overcooked 2. Um, but yeah, we should talk about Rainbow Six Extraction. That was uh, really fun. So, so yeah, as, as Rebecca said, I've been playing that. And play, uh, Jeff and I have been playing Halo. Rebecca, you, we still need to get you into our fire team in Halo. For some <laughs> yeah. reason, the timing quite hasn't worked out. But yeah, we, we went into Rainbow Six. We talked about it last week. We had the interview last week. And we're like, we, we need to play this. We tried playing it last week, but timing didn't work out. But we finally got to do it. And well, <laughs> how should we set it up, Jeff? How should we, how should we talk about this? Rebecca, why don't you why don't you let us know okay. your experience? Because this is your first time playing. Um, I really liked it, but I will say, like, out of the three of us, I was the least experienced. So I had the benefit of kind of coming in and being told what to do, which is great. Like <laughs> it's awesome when someone else already figures out these are the rules, these are the objectives. This is what there we're is supposed no to be doing. health. Go Here quiet. This place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, oh, you took the only health pack. Oops, my bad. Um, but I, I actually really liked it. I think I would just need to play with someone like Jeff who can kind of uh, very politely guide me in the right direction. But Larry, it didn't seem like you were so. <laughs> on the game. <laughs> well, here's the Larry thing. Here's the Larry thing. And this is not reserved for Rainbow Six Extraction. This is the anything where it's like, okay, we're going here. And then uh, Larry, why don't... Where's Larry? Where's Larry? <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Oh, he's clear across the map, <laughs> setting off traps, alerting the enemies. And, mm -hmm. and, you, and, you know, with mixed results. Well, well. To be fair, and I, that's a fairly accurate representation of some of my gameplay with the new game. It's you know you're kind of like a new puppy in the house where you're kind of walking around trying to poke things and figure out what's what's the game, what's the environment. Fair. <laughs> the problem is, or the 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 different element with Rainbow Six is once you lose your operator, your character, they're out of the game. 
And yeah, and for it could be for a significant amount of time because they just don't respawn. They kind of you go back to the character. There's a about a dozen character uh, operators that you can choose from, and there's a big X over them, and they're they're kind of their health is regening rather slowly. Um, yeah, so, so they come back. I, right? I did feel the game was a little bit severe or like harsh <laughs> in that sense. Like I. I don't know. I, I feel like in most games, if you get revived by your teammate, there's usually not too much of a penalty. Maybe you lose some health, but you can only be revived like once in a in an excursion. I don't know what we call them. Um, so, you know, my first match that I played online with other people, um, I died pretty fast. I got revived yep. and then I died again. And then I was spectating for like five minutes. <laughs> so yeah. um, I don't know. I guess it was a little I found the consequences to be a little bit too harsh. Well, they, they and, and that's exactly, I mean, I think I've downed, I think I've already taken out five operators, so they're all in ICU <laughs> right now trying to come out. Yeah. But what, what what the funny story was is is we were I, we were playing it, and I, I'm down. I think, I, did I go down first, or did you go down first, Rebecca? I think I did. Yeah, yeah and then I went I down shortly thereafter. <laughs> and then Jeff, now, for those of you that have, have not played Rainbow Six, there's a mechanic where you have to pick the, 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 player who's now knocked out and get them to an extraction point and put them into um uh essentially a back to machine jeff calling kept calling it an oven uh <laughs> or it's like a dumpster you're like throwing them in the dumpster or it's like a tanning bed but yeah. but they've got they're kind of covered up and they look like a mummy and so jeff made a choice i'm gonna have to I, agree so here's I'm, the here's the thing about this game <laughs> is is you there's risk reward all the time yes how how much do you do before you say, mm, I don't think we're going to be successful because it's not just finishing the mission and it goes to black and everyone's right. like, yeah, you did it. You know, mm -hmm. it's, you need to escape. And if you don't, then there's consequences as, as you said, Rebecca. And mm -hmm. I feel like Larry, you've, you're an optimist. Let's just put it that way. And it's like, <laughs> if we were going to a buffet, you'd be like, I'm eating six plates, man. I'm, I've got this. <laughs> And, and after like two plates, I'm like, I think we should stop. I don't know. And you're like, let's do it. And so there's chances to turn back or to keep going. And we wanted to keep going. It didn't work out so at well. All. So, at all. So you you two go down. And, and I have five hit points, by the way. I'm like, yeah, that's really right. dead. <laughs> yes. And we have so we're going to show a video along. in a moment. It'll all be there. <laughs> and, and, and I'm like, that's it. We're getting the hell out of here. So mm -hmm. I'm just going to pick pick. You know, we are leaving <laughs> and let's get it's like, no, I'm not doing it. So uh, you can roll at this point if you want to roll the footage. And this and what you're going to see I, now I, is just let me set this up. This is footage yeah. from Rebecca's point of view. So Je this is Je uh, Rebecca is basically in her death cam and Jeff is going through it. So let's go ahead. Okay. Talk about so I, I pick you up and I'm like, let's just sneak around and then I find the exit. And uh, by the way, watch this. Here we are. Oh, you you, oh, you went to oh, oh, you got to show the one where we see a little bit more. We All right, let me let me let me go. To, let me short. yeah, let me show you. Um, this is I'm sorry. This is yeah, that, that was way too short. So let you, me go you ahead. cut straight to the punchline. Like, All right, let me let me let me yeah. go right. Let me let me try this. This is Rebecca's point okay, of view. That was so I'm, I'm like okay, we're gonna get out of here. We made it. I'm gonna get Rebecca and I'm gonna evaluate. If we could pick up, like, First of all, who this person, is in this, this safe zone? This is the safe zone. Not, Why nope. are you in here? And by the way, I'm Jeff fans the hammer there. We don't know how he does that. I don't even know that. what I'm doing. I'm freaking out. I'm like, okay, great. Now I got to wait for that gas to dissipate. You see, I have five XP. Then another dude shows up. One shot, one kill. Okay, fine. Now Let's I'm gonna, close the door, then shall we? One. Then another one. I'm like, F it. I'm shutting the door. And that guy steps <laughs> in the elevator. The door should have squished him, but no, it's like, well, this could be a person. It opens back up and then they promptly mm -hmm. kill me. And the scream that I let out of like, just like, it was very much like the cliche, like, no. no. <laughs> like my wife came down and she was like, what are you doing? And I thought you had made it, but if you had, you had a, you had the right thought of closing the door, but apparently the AI uh, ripped it they apart. Knew, they knew. Bam. And, and you know what I will say is I don't react that much to a game. You know that often <laughs> the game. This game, Rainbow Six Extraction, has stakes. The stakes are high. The risk and reward is real, and uh, failing right there was so painful. And then what we didn't record, and it's a good thing we didn't, is the next mission. We tried to go back and rescue. Oh yeah, our well, that was corpses, a disaster. And and we were not successful in that endeavor. That was a disaster, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, I feel like that one was kind of on me. I was like not really understanding that we were supposed to shoot the like 
sparkling well, things well, no, no, that no, were no, like no. going it's, into that's, the body. Wait a minute. That's not, <laughs> do not take that responsibility because Jeff and I, because we had played a couple more matches than you, we had never gotten to that point where no. we had to extract. So oh, we didn't okay. even know what the game was. We're like, we were like, oh, we got to get back to the regular area where I died or you died. No, 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 no. Your character is kind of transported into this like, Kind of like an alien where, they, where they're stealing, yeah. they're brought to the to the hive. They were brought into this hive thing. We're like, oh, okay, we finally figured it out, but we still didn't know what the mini game was. Yeah. To your point, it was like God. It was like Gears of War, where like Dom was like captured, oh, yeah. and you know you had to like cut him out, and and I mean, and spoiler alert, that didn't work out so well either. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it happened anyway. So that, but it was a lot of fun, and I again, I love playing co op games that are that are unpredictable and this one was highly yeah. unpredictable i agree Very i think memorable. this is probably my my favorite co-op game that we've played like as a team so far so i, I liked it i would do it again <clears throat> yeah it was uh it was a lot of fun and we should probably try that again we just need uh, to get good i think it would be helpful if we watched because i did on twitch i was watching um people that knew what they were doing and it looked like a whole different game can i can so, i yeah, yeah can i show you this okay those are my operators that are dead that I, yeah. I, I no longer yeah. have operators. Oh, the rest are going to resign. <laughs> they're, they're, yeah, it's, they're, it's they're, kind of They know what they're there. walking into. So yeah. it's 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 un, unpleasant. But anyway, so that's a lot of, but you know, it's it's and it's on Game Pass now. Uh, so mm-hmm. go ahead and download it on Game Pass and you can check it out. Just you get a couple of friends together and you can kind of see what's going on. Oh, here come the invites, Jeff. I'm looking on the Ubisoft invites coming <laughs> <in here. laughs> Um But yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. If you have, again, and, and you know, I, been playing co-op games for a, for a better part of a vast majority of my life and they're always they're always you know a lot more fun when you when you play with friends so i want to thank you rebecca and thank you for jeff for that for those those uh lulls thanks thanks for the memories <laughs> <laughs> oh boy anyway uh what i guess i mean other than that i mean jeff and i have been playing we talked about a moment ago playing a little bit of halo where we're marching through i think the event is almost over now right jeff uh, yeah, we were this close to getting our mohawks. Uh, very much neon enjoyed. mohawks, Listen Mister. <laughs> neon mohawks. I got my visor, all that stuff. Really like the the stuff in the shop uh, and the and on the battle pass for this particular event. And it goes on. I'm sure by the by the time you hear this, you'll be in the last couple of days yeah. uh, to get that. I, there was we were not quite as under the gun. I thought we had to get them all in one week, and uh, I didn't get. I think I just got into the visor, but now. Uh, a few more times. Really enjoy uh, this attrition. new this new mode, attrition. Where have you, you can played res it yet, folks. Rebecca? I think you said you did play it, right? No, I don't think I have. Okay. You said it's so, a new the, mode, like in the last like week or two. Do you want to explain it, Larry? Yeah, it's it's actually specific to this event, the attrition, and it's 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 really interesting because in in normal Halo multiplayer there is no concept of revive, and in this one they they introduced it for this mode only. So you have. You know, you're a set number of lives, and once you go through that, you'll for the respawn. team. For the, the team, team shares them. So oh. each, each team has a set number of lives, and as they're whittled away, once you reach no, you'll hear the voice. You'll hear the Mister Announcer. No more revives. Uh, then you can then you can go in your 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 character. If you're if you're down, will go into a little ball. Your AI will be there, and, and then a coworker. Excuse me, a co. In this case, a coworker, <laughs> yeah. but a teammate can go over and revive them. And of course, you leave yourself yeah. exposed because it takes a second for it to go through. So it's it's a really interesting mechanic. Uh, we played a game last night against was it last night? Yeah, it was last night, Jeff. Against a pretty good uh, a pretty good team, and we were like, okay, we've got them. It's one v one, and all of a sudden, that person went the team uh, the opposing team went and revived essentially everybody. And it was it was we were out. And then it was one v four. Yeah, it was one v four, and it was game over. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's a lot of fun, and 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 to get you in there, they've got a whole series of special with the special event. You can, as Jeff said, you can unlock. I'm looking on this camera, the screen right now, you can unlock a series of things from visors and some some armor coatings and things like that. But we've had fun in that. If you if you like that concept of a revive, uh, but it's yeah, definitely it's definitely a nice a nice change of pace um, to have that. So more risk reward, cool. I think, because it yeah. takes a little bit of time to revive. And well, so, not only that, but you're much more careful like a lot about of that on this, this week. <laughs> you're much more careful about dying because you're whittling away the, at the team's resources. So that's, mm, yeah. that's that's one of those things. You don't well. want to be that guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you don't want to be you don't want to be that person taking the the only health on the level. Right yeah. back. Mm. <laughs> so. 
I know I, after like one or two matches of rainbow six extraction, I was like, oh, okay, I need to be a lot more careful and a lot more stealthy. So, okay. Maybe it's a nice warm up for attrition then. And, and Jeff's, Jeff's tip, which I think you gave on the, on, on the, on the show last week when we were re- reiterating last night when we were playing is make sure your loadout has a suppressor. <laughs> <laughs> Going quiet. Oh yes. Good tip. Good tip. Yeah. yeah. So, cause I, I ended up, I think it was, I think I ended up at one point cause I didn't have an operator left. I, I had to, pick a shotgun and i was like all right here we go boom 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 <laughs> jeff kind of got in the way of some of those shotguns. so shells. much for stealth yeah uh, all right i like there was one of the exploder guys like right in front of me and you just were like pull and you just you <laughs> blew him up it took half my health off in one go i'm like no, i think it was actually shoot the bomb when i'm standing right next to i you. think i think it was actually <laughs> that particular moment and that, that's what got your health down to, if you remember in that clip. that might have been mm. it yeah you know you remember in that clip I mean, guys jeff jeff i mean you can see down in the lower left hand corner yes Ooh, yeah jeff has five <laughs> hit points left here don't make me relive that moment <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, uh, all right. Well, we should probably, we got some news here. We got some interviews, Jeff. I don't know if you've got everything in front of you. Why don't you set us up so we can get us into the interviews? All right. Yes, we're going to be speaking with two folks. First of all, uh, Rebecca's going to be speaking with uh, someone who has joined uh, the team and has a really interesting role. His name is Albert Dankwa. And then you're going to see a very familiar face, Joe Three Sheets Neat from Rare to detail a whole bunch of new stuff that's going to be coming as we've seen the roadmap for 2022 for Sea of Thieves. I'm very excited today to welcome to the show Albert Denqua, who's the content developer on the Xbox team. Welcome, Albert. Thanks for joining us. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for having me here. Uh, I really appreciate it, and I'm excited to be in the Xbox podcast. Rebecca. Of course. Well, it's always awesome to speak with another Xbox colleague. So first, if you don't mind, do you want to just tell us a little bit about your role and what you do as a content developer? Sure. So as a content developer, I sit within um, the team for Xbox support. And and my job is to, well, my first job was to uh, create Xbox support videos uh, to, you know, be educational uh, and informative for our, our gamers and fans around the globe which I found much joy in. And then along the way, uh, my boss was like, hey, could you describe how you would present this video in 250 characters or less? I'm like, uh, okay. Uh, so I, uh, I made my first video. Well, I didn't make it myself, but I, I managed the process through freelancers uh, and it was on the uh, Xbox mobile app. And I, I wrote a, a, uh, a sentence within the character limit and then he goes, great. How about, why don't you be our Xbox support social media lead? And I'm like, uh, okay, sure. Uh, so started out making videos and now I also uh, manage uh, proactive, not the reactive, but uh, I uh, manage the proactive uh, Xbox support Twitter uh, as well as the YouTube. Okay, very cool. Very important job, support, interacting with the community. Love it. Um, are you a gamer yourself? I kind of assume so, but <laughs> you know, there are a lot of folks who work at Xbox who aren't personally gamers, but what do you think? Yeah, I absolutely love gaming. I grew up gaming. Uh, it's, it's been a part of my life. I actually wouldn't be here if it wasn't for uh, gaming. I can, I can go on and on and like list all the, the games, the, um, the heroes, the characters, the worlds, the franchises that I love, but gaming is, is life. Do you, did you think growing up that you were going to work in the gaming industry? <sighs> Initially, no. A- and I, I don't want to sound like I'm not optimistic in a way, but I just, I just thought it was just too much of a long shot, you know, just growing, but just growing up in the South Bronx, I was always under the impression that, you know, people had to go to like a high visibility college, you know, where you can see the recruiters get an internship and then make it into the industry. So I never thought that I would be here until I had an experience that changed my life. And then I thought, you know what? I think this is possible. That's cool. Yeah. I feel like a lot of the people I talk to have kind of an unconventional route to gaming or like they don't really grow up thinking like, I'm going to be a game developer or like work in games marketing or something. And then that's where they end up. Like me personally, I 
didn't even think about Xbox until, um, you know, I was already in college. Like I'd been planning to like work for like the government or something. And then someone was like, oh, there's this opportunity with Xbox. There's this internship. And I was like, wow, that sounds like way more fun. And I love games. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, so how did you get into this specific role? I feel like you've held a few different roles across the Xbox team, if, if I'm not mistaken. Sure, sure. Uh, so where it started first, uh, like you, I was looking at a different industry and I wanted to pursue a career in media communications. And I was working for a, uh, a uh, media network company and do an event that was sponsored by Microsoft. And it ended up changing my life. And I got an opportunity to help with the Xbox One launch where I got to help um, employees in our third party uh, partner stores. So Best Buys and Walmarts and GameStops. And I would teach and train them on the... Uh, on the Xbox One through a third-party um, uh, partner marketing company. And it was a temporary program, but it was enough to give me that that slice of gaming, that slice of the life of what could be. And it was enough to propel me to take a chance. And I, I went and I applied for the Microsoft store, physical stores. And I was turned down twice, but the third time I actually got hired. And I started out Ooh, six and a half years ago at our, um, well, was was our Microsoft retail flagship store in, uh, in Fifth Avenue, New York City. And that's where I began my journey as a product advisor. So fancy way of saying sales associate. And there, <laughs> but I loved it because it was just so, it has so much range. I was able to, you know, help, help, a, uh, help a grandma set up solitaire on her surface all the way to helping somebody set up their business for the first time using Microsoft 365. So it was a really rich range in which I can help uh, customers in my community as well. Uh, really realize their dreams and empower them using Microsoft's uh, technology uh, products and services. And, uh, and then from there, I was able to uh, get promoted to a learning specialist in which I was onboarding field employees, teaching and training them the same way it was done for me. Uh, and and that was the last title I held before uh, coming to Team Xbox. Very cool. Well, I'm glad you didn't give up after those first two times you were turned down. Um, <laughs> yeah, I feel like, you know, not that many people that I work with, like this was just their first job straight out of college. Like I was also a vendor, um, like working with Microsoft, but not at Microsoft for like five years before I got my job on the Xbox team. So, you know, it, it, it's a journey, right. But it sounds like you had a lot of experience, like working with people, like kind of getting to know the needs of like, like players and customers. And so hopefully that I would assume that kind of helps inform what you're working on today. So that's, that's a pretty cool journey. Yeah, uh, I was very fortunate uh, to to be in that location because because it was a very high traffic, high visibility place, and we had like a lot of visitors. So I was very fortunate to meet people such as our CMO Chris Capicella, uh, even Sati himself met me, which I which I thought was crazy, but it um, <laughs> it happened. But the one thing that really set the uh, ignition on this journey was back in 2016 when we had our very first midnight launch in the store and we wanted it to be big. Uh, it was Tom Clancy's Division, the first one. Uh, and we had a um, what was called a community specialist and, and they pretty much helped set up events uh, internally, externally. Uh, and one of them had grabbed me and said, hey, Albert, we're gonna do this launch. Uh, I'm not really big into gaming. Can you just help, you know, help me along with this meeting and this walk so that you can answer any Xbox questions. So I said, sure, no problem. I'll go ahead and do it. And all of the names, all of the people coming through the door and lo and behold, the last person to step through is Larry Herb himself. And I'm like, <laughs> wow, Major Nelson. Uh, and we do the walk, we do the tour, everything's great. And then Larry goes, wow, this is a lot. I'm gonna do this, but I, I need one thing. And my team is like, what do you need, Larry? What do you need? Because it, again, it's the first launch and we want it to be big. And what's bigger than having Major Nelson, you know, be the host. So he goes, oh, I need that guy to be my chaperone. And, and I'm, I'm looking at me and he's like, yeah, 
you. And then they're like, Albert, sure, sure. Just have him, just have him. Uh, and it was great. You know, I got to work with uh, Larry and, you know, just pretty much, hey, you know, five minutes till the, the stream ends. Uh, we're going to do a giveaway here. So this kind of helped managing him navigating the building and do the event. But the key there in that night was I got to talk to Larry for about 15, 20 minutes during one of the breaks. And I told him everything I wanted to do. I said, hey, Larry, I want to be on Team Xbox one day. Uh, I love gaming. I want to, you know, stay in New York too and do it. And he looked at me and he said a lot of things. Um, he gave me a lot of advice, but the one thing that stuck with me, he was like, Hey, I want you to be persistent. I want you to be consistent. And above all, you've got to be patient because it's going to be a journey. There's no blueprint for this, but if you believe in the vision and you believe in yourself, you can achieve it. And he had prompted me to go ahead and create something. He said, you know, make sure you work on a portfolio, something that shows your talent. Uh, and I went home that night and um, I made my first internal digital magazine. And and that helped propel me to uh, to this role today. So Thank you, Larry. That's so cool. Yeah, I love to hear that. I mean, obviously, I'm a little bit biased. I have also very <laughs> strong feelings for Larry as my coworker. Um, but that's so cool. I'm. It's it's awesome. Like some people, like so early on, have such a profound impact on our careers. And so I'm I'm really glad to hear that Larry was able to help you and meet you like years back. Um, that is, it is quite the journey. Um, <laughs> but so now then I guess, so you, okay. So you work in gaming, but I mean, are there any other fields that interest you? Do you think you want to stay in gaming forever? <laughs> oh, oh, definitely. Um, well, I still want to stay in gaming. I love Xbox. It's always been my calling. I believe it's my calling. I am looking at, you know, maybe other areas, I really like social. I love uh, I love Xbox social and comms. I also love Xbox uh, brand uh, brand lifestyle and partnerships. I think that's also a good uh, a good area to be in. Uh, funny enough, over the summer, uh, Aaron Greenberg had and and I'm not sure if he's joking or not, but he had commented on one of my tweets and he had called me like the best dressed man in gaming and. It, it just spread like wildfire. Uh, and then I'm like, oh, Larry. Uh, um, and then I'm like, hey, oh, Aaron, stop. You know, you're, you're too kind. And, you know, people people kind of took to it. You know, it was like, well, is Albert going to buy this? Or, hey, if Albert has this, you know, this Xbox swag or this Xbox gear, then I know it's good because, you know, he he goes out and gets this stuff. So it, it kind of propelled me and like pushed me to like think about uh, the brand and lifestyle part of it as well because it was only, you know, I only got our products. I only get our swag and stuff because I like it uh, and I genuinely love it. Uh, and the fact that people were taking stock into that, it had me thinking. And <laughs> that's also, <laughs> that's also a lane or also an area that, uh, that I uh, also am pursuing. So one of my goals, I do have a lot of stuff on the bucket list, but I actually want to be one of the models on the Xbox gear shop uh, site. So, um, well, Working it seems patiently. like you're able to do whatever you put your mind to. So I might be seeing you this soon. You know what? I believe it. Uh, I, I'm going to see it and I'm going to work towards it. Manifest it. Make it happen. Um, right, well, right. I hope that I get to meet you someday, uh, Mr. Best Dressed on the Xbox team. Uh, <laughs> but thank That's you so much for joining us opinion. today. <laughs> no problem. Yeah. No problem. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Sea Thieves fans, you've got a big week this week. We uh, we heard some great news from Rare, and joining us today is Joe Neat, executive producer of Sea Thieves. Joe, great to see you as always. And you, it's always a pleasure to be back here. It usually means we've got something to talk about, doesn't it? So it's great. Yeah. It sure does. <laughs> tell, tell us about what you guys announced this week. I know there's a blog post that came out, depending upon when you're listening to this very recently, either yesterday or you know a few days ago. Tell us about the blog post and what, what you guys have announced coming to Sea of Thieves. Yeah, so so very much, you know, for the last year, uh, we've been running seasons, um, and we did season five in uh, kind of December, uh, which was that really cool tools, not rules approach with the fireworks, with like a, mil a million things, burying treasure, like yeah. so so much stuff in there. Um, but we were very much looking at the the previous year and kind of looking at seasons and almost how do we level up? How do we level up this approach? And so we yeah. loved what seasons brought. It always brought in new mechanics at the start of a season. Um, 
uh, gave you that progression, that ability to play the way you wanted. But what we really looked at is how do we kind of give you more interesting things in between the kind of launch of seasons? How do we bring more emotion and more narrative into our world and make it feel like the world's kind of ever changing and evolving? And so we announced that alongside seasons, we're bringing in adventures and mysteries. So those, those will be kind of the three pillars of our of our ongoing kind of world and live service is, you know, the, the seasons that, that everybody knows and loves, but then these adventures, which are these time-limited kind of narrative-led events that will really drive the world forward. They, they will herald the introduction of new mechanics. And yeah. um, they also have that ability for our community to kind of influence them as well. The way players choose to, um, you know, side with different kind of, sides or, or factions or something as you go through things like this will help um influence the path that our that our world takes and the story takes so there's some really interesting stuff there and then mysteries are another thing all, all unto themselves right? can't very mysterious talk, you can't talk really too much about mysteries because otherwise it won't be a mystery <laughs> indeed yeah but but you know we we've been open that um our first mystery which will begin kind of during uh season six does I have to be careful not to say the wrong thing here, but but um, <laughs> starts with the the murder of a well known character from the Sea of Thieves oh, universe. No. Yeah, and oh, so my. yeah, so you know we um, we're really excited by the prospect of mysteries and by this unfolding um, mystery within the game, but also with clues and 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 things unfolding out of the game as well. So you're going to be progressing it forward within the game. Our community is, but also there'll be clues and things released out, and it's something we see. You know, we're really interested to see how that plays out. It kind of takes things from from ARGs um, that we're going to be kind of folding in, but with stuff in game two. Yep. Um, but yeah, it's all about solving um, solving this mystery, which is the murder of a character. And um, so the character is yet to be revealed who that's going to happen to. But right. um, you know, it's like it's like a, a um, an actor that reads the script. It's like, oh, I've got like, I've got to film that scene. That's that's how that character's feeling right now. Right. Um, as the, they know their scene, <laughs> they know their future. <laughs> well, I, before you know, we've got some we've got some gameplay that we're going to show in just a minute um, that you guys sent over, which is great. But I want to talk a little bit about your extraordinary year last year in 2021. I mean, it was. I mean, it it, it just felt like you guys were on a roll, and then we hit June, and we had this your great tie in with it with the Pirates of the Caribbean, which. I, as you know, because I, I was so proud that I finished the entire thing in 100%, and I sent you an email personally. Um, but let's talk about last year, because it was, it, was really, it was really an amazing year for Sea of Thieves, wasn't it? Yeah, no, it was incredible, right? Like, if we, if we look back, the, the fact that we launched, even just that we began doing seasons within that year, right? Like, we started 2021 with seasons. Now seasons are just how we do Sea of Thieves, right? But right. that was where we started it at the beginning of last year. And then hidden away in the background very much so was the um us working on uh, a pirate's life and a dream a dream for everyone at rare right to be able to work on um something like that in collaboration with disney who were an amazing partner as well honestly just a, it was a dream to work with them and the alignment we had around what we were doing and why uh but to keep it secret as well like we've talked about in the past like to be able to do that and surprise people in the way that we did um you know on that on that virtual digital stage at e3 was was incredible and to think that that only got us halfway through the year right like like yeah um uh but yeah it was it was an amazing moment i think you know a a career highlight i think in a lot of ways for um for so many people because it's not often you get to work on you know such a beloved ip like that and also one that's but that's also within our own beloved ip that we're getting to bring that to that it's just like that's that's really cool right yeah i mean it's it is cool and it's and again this is if you're just watching now or you're just getting into sea thieves this content's there. You can go back and can and play it again or enjoy it or bring your friends in and play it again. So it's not like it's, in, you know, you talk about some of the time limited stuff, but mm-hmm. in this case, the pirate's life is not, it's going to live on. No, 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 it's all. It's, it's yeah. which is lovely. So, but you know, you had a massive year for Sea of Thieves. I saw this topping 25 players life to date and you had 5 million copies sold on Steam. Congratulations on that. That's, that's no small feat. <laughs> again it's it's amazing right and you know and both both of those numbers were announced a little while ago they're a bit higher now i can't quite reveal what they sure. where they are but sure. um but but it was and, and actually if we look year on year so we're in our fourth year now of, of sea of thieves like ne- like nearing our fourth anniversary actually in, your in senior March, year and, as you would say in the united yeah. states so you're, <laughs> Indeed, you're, if you're yeah. in high school <laughs> <laughs> and but each year has been bigger than the last and that's not just in terms of what we've released but like by by looking at the data and looking at the player numbers in terms of 
And, and so not just that like 25 million total player number going up, but it's actually how many people turn up each year. Yeah. So it, like 2021 was categorically our biggest year yet in terms of player numbers, the people that played Sea of Thieves during that year. And that was 25% bigger than 2020, and that was bigger than 2019, and then bigger than 2018. So, this, you know, our community, our player base, the buzz, the excitement, the kind of this this with this world, this, um, this game is continually growing from a feature perspective, but it's also growing from a player base and community's perspective. And that's just an awesome sort of trend to be on. And, you know, we... we kick off the start of each year saying this year is going to be the biggest year yet. And so far we've not been proven wrong. So hopefully I'll be back here next January saying the same thing. Um, but you know, we'll someone will clip that and we'll see if it's true. Uh, let's, let's, yeah, <laughs> let's see what happens there. Now I, w- I want to yeah. talk a little bit about some of the, some of the uh, gameplay that you guys sent over here. Tell us what we're looking mm-hmm. at here. Cause this is, this is kind of a fly through, but tell us what we see. Yeah, so these are our sea uh, forts, which are coming in uh, as part of season six, and so these are kind of like similar, like in terms of the the forts themselves. So the forts that you have in Sea of Thieves are these big kind of shared world, tries to drive multiple crews together. This brings that fort experience, but in a more compact, smaller thing that's maybe more suitable to solo or to small single crews, and it doesn't advertise its kind of um, active state when people are taking it on. So it's trying to kind of give people that shorter session for experience, maybe for um, for kind of smaller crews, but really like delivering what people love about it. But as you so can you see, may, visually, you may stumble upon yeah. these as you're, you're kind of cruising through the world as opposed to when you're playing, seeing some of the skeleton forts, which have a clear indicator that something's going on. Exactly that. And so there are six of these now in the world. And these have, like, if we think about the the narrative that our adventures will tell and, and will kind of unfold and, and what you've seen previously in the narrative, including kind of uh, the Pirate's Life Tool Tales and everything, like this all is interconnected and, and follows on. So the reason for these sea forts appearing and where they've come from um, is going to be explained as part of that uh, that ongoing narrative as part of adventures. So it's all kind of tied together, you know, that the, the, the new, the, the new features that we want to continue to grow, uh, like in, introduce into our world as, uh, as part of seasons will tie together with that ongoing narrative. So it, it's all connected. It all makes sense. Um, but yeah, the, but these, like, this is such a beautiful architecture as well. It's that kind of Spanish colonial kind of architecture that you, that you recognize. But again, we've seen this in the, um, the in the sea of the damned. We haven't seen this, um, in the in the kind of in the real world um, so far, so it's it's a nice kind of break from stuff that you've seen before as well. And as you can see, each each part of the world has a slightly different style as well in terms yeah. of these forts where, where they show up. So you can see they look quite 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 unique and quite different. Yeah, that's the great thing about these is that you'll be able to kind of stumble upon them as you said solo or maybe with a with a duo, <laughs> and you got you you can take on this fort without frankly, attracting a lot of attention from that Reaper ship that always shows up at the last minute to, <laughs> yeah, to totally, take all yeah, your yeah. stuff, right? So this is, this yeah, is exactly. kind of, yeah. this kind of addresses that. I mean, those will still be there, but this is kind of a more, yeah. this is more of a quiet, uh, subtle, conservative way of participating. Exactly. Takes takes away some of the risk, but not all of it. So right? Joe, there's a lot of stuff in this update. Uh, in it. This is just January. You have an entire year ahead of you. We do indeed, yeah. Um, and we're kicking off with well, the, the first adventure starts February seventeenth, uh, and then March the tenth is when season six starts, uh, which introduces the the sea forts, it introduces the pirate legend quests, um, and then we roll into the kind of monthly cadence of adventures that we are having on um, kind of on top of our seasonal delivery. Yeah, I mean, it's it's you guys continue to roll on there and continue. I know you've got a lot of plans this year for Sea of Thieves. This is just the beginning, right? I mean, every year you, you like you said a moment ago, every year you want it's your biggest year ever. But I know you've got some pretty big plans. You're not going to talk about them now because we're just excited about the next season and what you've brought into it and focusing on just really bringing great experiences for players. It's it's got to be great to have you know 25 million pirates around the world, Joe. That's amazing. It's honestly, it's it is, it's amazing. Like, it, like we when we started this, and um, you know, when, when when we set off with this, I don't think we ever realized or even hoped really that we would reach that many people with this. Right? Um, right. And it's a it's a privilege to be able to do it. Right? It's a privilege to work on Sea of Thieves. It's a privilege to basically go and build our plans based around what cool content do we want to go and add to the game? How do we want to grow this in the way that's going to delight our players? And you know, of course. At the back of our minds, we're always thinking about like we need to continue. We want to continue to be a successful business. We want to continue to make sense to to kind of do this. But it's always been about how do we like 
lead with the creative? How do we lead with the game experience? How does that be always the thing and always the player experience is the thing that uh, matters to us the most? And so um, we're lucky that we've got a game and we've got a you know a way that we work and a way that we grow and evolve this that continues to lead to kind of um, it being successful and bringing more players in and, and everything. So it's just it's just it's great, right? It's a privilege and it's um, an honor to be able to work on something like that. Well, it's it's a little it's that, but it's you know when you when you have the ability to build what you want to build is amazing. And I know that this is a testament to your boss, uh, you know, Craig Duncan, who's ahead of Rare, and then his boss, you know, Matt Booty. And then it just goes right up to Phil because they're just like, just go build what's going to make sense and what's going to make gamers happy, right? That, that is absolutely it, right? Like, and it's it, that that culture and that, that kind of culture of empowerment and of trust and of, like, you know, that even just this, all of the different studios that we now have as part of um, uh, part of Xbox, that, that's that's the approach right it's like hey we're, we're we're we want great studios because we know that they can go build great experiences for our players and it's like so go do what you do best right and and we trust you to kind of make good decisions just keep us informed as to what you're doing and let us know why and let us yeah. know how we can help but yeah. um but yeah it's it's a it's an amazing it's an amazing culture and a place to be part of right like you couldn't ask for more uh, as, a, as a games developer so you kind of feel like the the best funded indie developers in the world because you get to go be independent and feel that way and, and make your own decisions and um you know it's not like you're kind of having to submit milestones every three months to kind of go is that okay it's no you okay? just go hey this is what we're doing like <laughs> and, and, and this on is off what we're doing go. it and yeah it's great right so it's a like like I said, it's a privilege to be in that position because I've worked at different companies, different places, different cultures, and nothing's felt like this. Well, I got to tell you, uh, you know, you know, I'm a big fan of what you guys do. The game, you personally, you know, everybody there at Rare. It's one, some, one of my favorite studios to come out and visit. So I want to thank you for another amazing year last year, CTs, and what we have to look forward to. Uh, I'll put a link to the blog post down below in the show notes so that people can go, kind of go through it. And I'm sure there's all sorts of threads. You have an amazing community that are going to go through this line by line and moment by moment and <laughs> syllable by syllable. So again, congratulations to you and the team, Joe. It's I know it's it's been a great uh, last year, been great four years, and I'm looking forward to, like I say, having you back in a few months to talk about more fun stuff. Indeed. All right, Always a pleasure. I'll let, I'll let you get back into your cool pirate's den there. We'll talk to you later, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> See ya. Thanks, Rebecca, for that very illuminating discussion with Albert Dankwa and, of course, Larry, bringing Joe Neat back to talk about uh, a really exciting year of 2022 with new adventures, this whole mystery thing for Sea of Thieves, uh, season six, like a lot a lot of stuff coming up. Uh, and yeah. it was really cool to see them share everything. And by the way, if you want all the details on that, if you want to watch the stream that they did last Thursday – uh, they've captured that. It's on uh, Xbox Wires, of course, on seeathieves.com as well. You can uh, you can watch that. There's a lot of there's a lot to be excited about. Pull link there. Also, I want to thank Albert. He was he was just so overly generous and kind in the words he said about me. It was it was slightly embarrassing, but I want to I want to thank him. <laughs> you can edit all that out. What? No, he was, <laughs> he was he was very nice. He was very nice, and I it was unexpected. And and thank you for your kind words as well, Rebecca. So anyway, it was it was great to see Rebecca. I love. You know, hearing voices, uh, the different voices around the Xbox organization, because we've got so many interesting stories, and Albert is just one of many. We'll be telling a lot of those stories in the in the coming shows, because uh, you know, there's there's such such amazing people that work with us that have gotten into the games industry, specifically at Xbox, through very unorthodox ways. Right? It's just been mm -hmm. crazy. I mean, you know, Jeff was working uh, was working at a newspaper in Central Florida. Now he's you know running a team for Microsoft in Seattle, you know, Rebecca, you've got a fascinating story from, you know, you told a little bit of it during your, during the interview, <laughs> you know, so that everybody's got an interesting story to tell. So. Yeah. But the one thing we all have in common is we all love games, yes. but yeah, there are just so many different unique roles across the team. So I love getting to meet other colleagues on Xbox and especially with Albert being in New York, I think he and I are probably going to meet up and maybe chat with some other local New York folks. So it was, it was really great to get his, uh, get introduced to him. Plus, he also grew up in New York. You know, you're you're kind of a, um, a <laughs> yeah. temporary. Feels like long term. Can I call myself a New Yorker yet? <laughs> I'm okay so. <laughs> with that, uh, but yeah, you know, you're you're. So I'm sure he can show you where the where the where the better pizza is and and you know whatnot and all the all the good stuff there. So looking forward to seeing what happens there. Anyway, uh, Jeff, you got some news, and then Rebecca, we're gonna we're gonna talk about Wordle starting words because we asked that question last <laughs> week. And, uh, yeah, right. How's your yes, how's, Wordle, how's Wordle going for you this week, folks? I mean, I've solved them. 
<laughs> not not in three uh, turns or two turns, but yeah. Yeah, I've I've had some three. I've actually been having dreams about Wordle, and my roommate oh. said this too. Like, are you I talking in your sleep? Week. <laughs> no, I, um, we both had dreams that we like solved it super fast. Like in my dream last night, actually, I dreamt that I got it on my first guess and the word was spleen, which is kind of hilarious because that's actually a six letter word and not a <laughs> five letter word. So. Splen, right. <laughs> yeah. So my dream is never going to come true. Um, but yeah, I got, I think I got them this week on like my third and fourth try. Um, it's kind of funny. Like I, I like playing this game because it's, it's helping to expand vocabulary a little bit. Like we talked about how like Shire was kind of an unfamiliar word. And then right. this week, um, one of the words was Knoll, K-N-O-L-L, which is like a grassy hill or something. And a lot of my friends were like, I've never even heard of this word before. And I've I'm, never I'm seen from JFK. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> but it's fine. How about you guys? Oh, no, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm playing it with, you know, we, we're on this internal teams channel where we post every morning or every day and, Jeff chided Every morning. me. Jeff chided me we all for, do it right away. for sharing too much information, I guess. More than once. <laughs> and and I, I'm always, I think, just about the last person to do it. And I always look because I wake up and I have all these notifications. And it's usually like 3.37 a.m. today, Larry. So someone from London at 1.48 a.m. That makes sense because it's like 10 a.m. for her. And then you are you're at 3.37 a.m. Pacific. Like- I, I, you know, I was reading an article that back in the Middle Ages, before we had like electricity and uh, like clocks, like people would go to sleep at sunset and they would wake up around midnight and they'd be up for a couple hours and then they go back to bed and sleep again. So it was like sleep was segmented. It's a whole thing. Oh, that's interesting. And, and I feel like that's you, Larry, except, you know, <laughs> they used to get up and I don't know where they would do chores. You get up and you do Wordle and then you go back, presumably, I hope you go back to bed. I do. I do. There you go. You're just you're living natural sleep. Natural well, you know, you talked about that, but I was actually sleep. I was reading an, another unrelated article, I believe, about how um, some of the Native Americans what they would use for an alarm clock, water, because water it took so long to go through the body, so they would drink a lot of water in at a certain time <sighs> during the night, and they would all wake up at the same time because their bodies are like, I got to go to the bathroom, and then they would. Oh, that's interesting. Right. Wow. <laughs> huh. so, so there you go. So that's part of me. Like I said last week, that's kind of why I get up because I go up and you know drinking a lot of water. But uh, yeah. yeah, I like to I like to keep my mind going twenty four seven. Always learn, Jeff. Always be learning. I love it. That's what I do. I I, I okay. So. Not three thirty seven. I, I, I learned it. Too it much. sounded like it was going to be an acronym. Like always be learning. No, like, I, just, I, I, like, I, I, I couldn't go there. Always, I, I, I couldn't do that much. But anyway, we're we're, we're going to talk about your word awards because last week, if you listen to the show on Spotify, it, we, we're in video and we have this new feature where we can ask a question. If you scroll down, you'll see it. So we'll talk about that. Um, no, do it now. You're going to do it now. All right. About it. Let's okay, do it. Let's, let's, we might let's, as well. So uh, Rebecca, yeah. I think you've 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 got got a bunch of the responses there. If you can uh, maybe talk about some of what. Yeah. And the question was, just to remind people, what is your Wordle starting word? That was the question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So some pretty good answers. Um, so my favorite was from Papa Giorgio, who commented also that like he watched Wheel of Fortune, um, which I also watched Wheel of Fortune. And so we have a similar starting word. My first starting word is, depending on the word of the day previously, is usually steel. So S-T-E-A-L. Um, but Papa Giorgio mm -hmm. put in tears, which is also a good one. That's a good one, um, yeah. Kind of similar similar vein with Wheel of Fortune letters. Um, I also liked orate, O-R-A-T-E, from Ooh, Jacob Morgan, 1221. Yeah. yeah, three vowels in one word. That's a nice touch. I might steal that one. Yeah. Um, kind of similarly is honey from Infinite Eight John. I thought that was a good one, too. Hmm. Um, also flash from Alex O'Connor using a lot of those same wheel of fortune words. Um, and then also <laughs> lastly, we have Xbox from Tommy Balconin, which is, I love the spirit, but it needs to be five letters. <laughs> the rules, so, my friend. Is it X B O X X? Like how does he? No. Okay. Just, no, just Xbox. Four letters. Okay. Yeah. I love the effort, but, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's so we, we love getting, 
Yeah. I mean, we love getting the answers through Spotify, so please continue to send them to us. Um, I think this week we wanted to know, just since we've all been playing Rainbow Six Extraction, yes. if anyone has any tips or things that you know you recommend for other people who are playing, we would love to hear them because if you couldn't tell from the clip that we took, we kind of sucked. So. <laughs> so so your homework, uh, your assignment, should you choose to accept it, is if you're a Game Pass member, and I know if you listen to this show, you're a Game Pass member, go download Rainbow Six Extraction uh, either match make it'll put you with some folks or get some find some friends that are also uh, you know also on Xbox and want to play game uh, play Rainbow Six and kind of play around with it and then send us your tips we'll put that go go to Spotify and you'll scroll down and you'll see what's the question so give us your tips doesn't matter what it is small large we'd love to hear it right help us play yeah. better help everybody help play us. better and then next week Rebecca will read them on the show and we'll give you full credit for all of your and then research. we will go play according to those tips yes and see if they see if we get better. So oh, thank wait, you. no, sorry. Absolutely. Next week, I won't be here. So I'm actually flying home for uh, Lunar New Year. You might know it as Chinese New Year. It's February 1st. What is it? Uh, is, is it a new, is, it's a new animal. What's the animal of the of this year of 2022? Yes, uh, we're going into the year of the tiger. Um, I can't really tell you any of the horoscope stuff about it, but it's just, you know, in a lot of different Asian cultures, it's a really important holiday. It's for some, it's the biggest holiday of the year. Mm -hmm. um, like Vietnamese call it Tet. Um, obviously the Chinese New Year, I think they have another name for it too, but um, usually just a really good time to get together with family or eat certain kinds of food. So what, uh, I what kind of food, what kind of food will you eat? I'm curious. Yeah. So, um, there are different, uh, there are different like traditions between different Asian cultures. So, for Koreans, we eat what's called duck guk, and so it's like rice cake soup. Um, I think that the rice cakes are supposed to be like maybe symbolizing coins. I can't really remember. I just know that we always eat like the rice cake soup, and they're kind of like circular rice cakes. Um, and I know that my Chinese friends, I think that they eat like noodles, like like they're long for like longevity, long life. Um, I know that they eat like fish and then also dumplings, I think for the same, like it's kind of shaped like a coin or like money <laughs> reason. So those are usually the things I eat. Cool. Yeah. Well, thank you. That's, that's, I appreciate that. Well, enjoy your week off. And Jeff and I, we're working on a special show for next week. We may have a special guest in. Stay tuned. If not, it'll just be he and I. So <laughs> we'll figure it out. We'll then it will it be out. a very not special show. Not, it'll, be, it'll be the most unspecial <laughs> show. But Jeff, you got a little bit of news over there. We talked about Rainbow Sick, or excuse me, we talked about uh, Sea of Thieves, and Joe talked about that, and you did some headlines. But you got some other stuff wrapped up there as well this week, right? That is correct. There's a few things you. Uh, new releases, things to be playing, things that have hit Game Pass. So the first one I want to call attention to um, is a game that really caught my attention, uh, made by a team called 40 Giants Entertainment out of Brazil. I don't feel like we've seen a tremendous amount of games coming out of Brazil, and this one really caught my eye. It's called Reverie Knights Tactics. It has that word tactics. If it has tactics in it, I will play it. If it was... <laughs> Tax Preparation <laughs> Tactics by yep. HR Agent R Blog. I would probably play it. Uh, but this one looks really cool. Uh, they've got a, a really nice, bold art style. Um, uh, reminded me of Banner Saga a little bit. Oh, yeah. Uh, and so if you were ever into that, uh, it, it just uh, it definitely is catching my eye. So I've downloaded it. I'm going to be playing it this weekend, and we'll talk about it next week. But there's a great post on how it all came together over on Xbox Wire. As to games that we talked about recently that are now available, uh, Taiko no Tatsujin. That's a tough one to pronounce. The Drum Master, the, the sort of those Taiko drums. That game is now out on Game Pass. I'm looking forward to trying that out, seeing what it's like. And um, there we go. Larry's, Larry's <laughs> you've been playing it already, clearly. He's ready. Uh, and I wanted to talk about on free play days. So free play days are uh, games that, you know, you can buy, but sometimes for a short amount of time, usually the weekend, uh, like Thursday night through Sunday night Pacific time, if you're an Xbox Live Gold or an Xbox Game Pass Ultimate member, you can download and play the full game for free during that time. You can have a hard time maybe beating the game, yeah. uh, but the goal being it's usually uh, on sale as well. And I want to call it this week, so For Honor game from Ubisoft that's been going on for uh, for years and has had season after season. So if you've never tried that out, uh, you can try it out for free. And if you want to buy it, the standard edition is $4.50. So yeah. not exactly a, a huge commitment. <laughs> yeah. there. And I want to call it one of my favorite, I would say, unsung games of uh, the last couple of years, Valkyria Chronicles 4. This is hmm. a game that uh, another sort of tactical RPG, but definitely like way more expansive. And it, it's uh, thinking outside the grid. 
loved this game. I must have put in 50 hours into it when I played it uh, last year. Uh, so that is available now. If you like what you've seen, definitely recommend you pick it up. The standard edition is 12 bucks, which is 60% off the complete edition, which I picked up. Highly recommend it because if you get into it, you're going to want to play all the DLC missions is $15. Uh, so definitely, if you like these types of games, support them. Uh, try it out. Valkyria Chronicles 4 and For Honor, free for now, but only until Sunday night. All right. That's that's. And good then thing. Uh, last thing, just want to mention uh, Games with Gold. So we announced February's Games with Gold, which uh, will become available starting February 1st. So we have Broken Sword 5, The Serpent's Curse. That'll be available all through the month of February from the 1st to the 28th. Also at that time, through the magic of backward compatibility, Xbox 360 game Hydrophobia. That's from February 1st through February 15th. Yep. And then our second half of the month games, we have a game called Aerial Knights Never Yield, and then Band of Bugs, which is another Xbox 360 game that I think uses your avatars, if I recall correctly. It's been a long time. Oh, that's but a good I think game. that might have been a tactical cool. game, too. Good, good call. Um, <laughs> yeah, that, it is. That was like a time. I remember playing that back in like 2006 or seven. It's been a long time, but I remember mm. having fun with that. Ah, the golden age of gaming, right? This is the golden age, Larry. It's been through many ages. Uh, anyway, thank you for the news roundup, Jeff. Lots, lots of news. You can always go over to news.xbox.com and check that out. Uh, you can also, as I've been flashing up here throughout the show, you can follow us on Twitter. You know, Rebecca works uh, uh, on the Minecraft team, so she'll frequently tweet about Minecraft things and also noodles. Um, <laughs> and then and then Jeff will, uh, well, I think he's still under the contract for Yakuza, right? You're still, you're still supporting Yakuza. <laughs> whenever, there, whenever there's news. Yeah. Affiliate, yeah. Uh, I may have been typecast as like the Yakuza guy, but um there's worse I, things to be known I, as. I appreciate I appreciate the passion. I mean, when we all find these, I found certain games over the years that I just completely gravitate towards to. Rebecca, I know you mm. found certain and that's that's the beauty of gaming is you there's something for everybody. And something just really, really, you know, flips your switch. And Clicks, yeah. So I'm just glad that we've all found our games, and I'm sure you have too. So <laughs> All right, gang. Well, we're going to wrap it up. Rebecca, I wish you a, uh, is is it appropriate to say Happy New Year, Happy Lunar New Year? I don't know. How do you say it? Can you tell me how you say it in Korean? Yeah, either's fine um, in Korean. It's it's really long in Korean. Um, okay. It's Sehe Bok Mani um, So, yeah. What does that New translate? <laughs> does that just translate to Happy New Year or is it something else like Happy New Year and good luck or? it's like have good luck in okay. the new year good. yeah okay. thank you thank you for yeah. that well i wish you and your family uh, is a wonderful celebration and whoever else is out there uh celebrating it i wish you a uh, happy lunar new year as well jeff anything you want to say before we roll uh gong hei fa choi which All right. is in uh hey, there we go there you and, go. uh and if you've seen ronnie chang stand up on netflix uh he dives into that which is uh i recommend it all right. Well, yeah, it was pretty good. Happy Lunar New Year. Jeff and I will be back next week, hopefully with a special guest. Otherwise, he's just going to be he and I. So we'll see you next time. Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>